eight Grammys, seven singles, the biggest selling album of all time. Bar none, we're talking about Mike. Uh, take two. <laughs> for those on YouTube, you're going to leave. You're going to leave this. It's going to be. You're going to see everything. But <laughs> for everybody in the podcast, we're going to do take two now. Eight Grammys, seven singles, the biggest selling album of all time, bar none. We're talking about Michael Jackson's Thriller. Stay with us. Welcome, friends, to the 3324 podcast. Uh, Halloween edition, Eric? Yeah, I would say. The first of, uh, you know. The first of uh, a couple. Yeah, this was your <laughs> idea, actually. It was kind of like, yeah, what kind of, you know. Well, it's this album isn't particularly Halloween themed. It was one we needed to talk about anyway. But well, Thriller is, is yeah. a big part of it, and right. if, if it's that's going to be a big, I'm sure that's going to be a big uh, chunk of the conversation right there. Is, yeah. So that, Eric, that, Eric's like, email. How about Thriller? I'm like, yes. <laughs> you <laughs> are <hard>. correct, sir. <laughs> it's difficult to pick a music episode for Halloween. I mean, we could. Yeah. You know, there's certain I mean, bands that kind of cater it. to that. I yeah. guess to that uh, image. I that, suppose, that surfy, but uh, that surfy monster style music is like that, you know, yeah. you know, like that, but there's not a lot of that to go around. So, well, our great episode with Ozzy, I mean, that's, uh, that's really doing extremely well. Thank you. That's um, kind of, uh, yeah, he's the Prince of Darkness. So if you want to go, we can put him in the, in the, <laughs> put him in the queue, ring, ring him up. Cause everybody else is listening to it as well. So if you that's right. By all means, yep. check that out. And also you can check us out on YouTube. Go ahead and go there. If you haven't yet, please go ahead and subscribe. It would mean so much to us. We appreciate it. We've got uh, the video versions of these episodes, plus the archive that you can't really get anywhere else of our live shows. Yeah. Uh, so any live shows we do, any of our trivia nights, they're there uh, to watch. And if you want to use the trivia nights for your own trivia night and host it, we'll, we'll be your hosts. We, we put the questions up and you can use that to uh, have a trivia night with your friends, which is no charge. Mm -hmm. Free. Very cool. Gratis. Gratis. As yes, they say very cool stuff. Gr gratis, <laughs> as they say in Latin. <laughs> Isn't that a dead language? Ah, see what I did there? Oh, ah, Halloween be. themed little, well, okay. be a little, dead language. little Halloween like, humor there. Like Sanskrit is, uh, you know. It's, it's, we, we, would need, we would need Dr. Jones to tell us if the language yeah. is dead or not. No. Yeah. He can, he can certainly help us determine that. Or Marcus Brody. He's probably, he probably knows even more about dead yeah, languages. Yeah, sure. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> Back from, back from, from the um, grave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we are oh. talking about Michael Jackson's thriller. Oh, man. All right. Let's get into the stats. We got a lot of stats here. Uh, yeah. No wonder with an album when it's the biggest selling album of all time. Um, and we're gonna, there's some caveats, but it is the biggest selling album of all time worldwide. Um, but we've got some we've got some information. There. So we're going to we're going to give it to you now. We're going to give you the facts and then we'll have the fun. Uh, released November of 1982, this was produced by Quincy Jones and Michael Jackson. Like I said in the open, seven singles. Okay, mm. in order, Monster. the girl, the girl is mine, <laughs> was the first single. Oddly enough, the girl is mine was the first single. Hit number two. Yeah, how? Yeah, how is that possible? <laughs> we'll get to it. <laughs> uh, hit that hit number two. Uh, next released was Billy Jean. Hit number one. Then beat it. Hit number one. Want to be starting something? Hit number five. Mm. Human Nature was the fifth single, and that mm -hmm. hit number seven. Pyt, Pretty Young Thing, was uh, the next one, the sixth single, hit number ten, and then the final single was Thriller, and that hit number four. This was the first album to yield seven top ten singles. Now we talked. This is the spiritual relative of Billy Joel. Yeah. Stranger. Okay. Actually, this is Billy Joel on steroids because when we did the Billy Joel album, it was nine <laughs> songs, right? And we talked about seven that everybody knew. This album has nine songs. Seven were released as singles. Billy Joel was like, okay, it was it was classic rock radio. We knew them. Yeah. This is like out of the nine songs, seven of them were released as singles. So there was it was no no uh lack of material there. Uh it won eight Grammy Awards. That's the most by a, a solo artist that is a record setter, and it's not been broken. Um, 34 times platinum in the US, right? We always, when we give mm. our stats, we always talk about platinum, 34 times platinum. There is an album uh, that is sold more in the US and that's the Eagles greatest hits. Yeah. Right. So caveat that um, that's a compilation. This is the biggest selling in, in the USA, the biggest selling album, you know, proper, but over 70 million worldwide, which the Eagles, Eagles do not touch. 
Okay, so right. this is yeah. worldwide. This is a monster. And oddly enough, uh, we didn't. We did, Eric and I didn't know that, or maybe he did know this, but I just found this out today. There's a 40th anniversary edition of this album coming out in November because it's the 40th anniversary. But that I didn't know. So there is a yeah, special, I, I there is a special was, edition yeah. coming out. There was they did a they did a, a 2001 edition, then they did a 25th anniversary edition, and now mm -hmm. there's the 40th anniversary edition, which has got it's got some demos. It's got a lot of remixes. Uh, you know, like I, I don't want the remixes. You know, I'd rather <laughs> hear demos and and you know other stuff. Does so, it include the music video? No, but it's got the instrumental version of Thriller on it. Oh, nice! Which is pretty neat. Cool. Oh, it's just got the. It's just the instrumental. Okay. Uh, which, which you know, what, one one of my notes about this album is, I would just love to hear all the, this album without vocals because it's just so well. <laughs> it's so well produced. Oh yeah, well that's uh, Quincy, Quincy Jones. Jones. Yeah, and it's just oh, yeah. it's so great. But before we get yeah. to that, or we've already hit it, so I'll leave it out later. Um, <laughs> 1982. Let's talk about 1982 in in music because, to be honest, there really wasn't a lot going on. You know, no. the, the music industry was kind of waning a little bit, um, and it was prime prime real estate for for an artist to kind of come in. Uh, some of the albums from 1982, and these these were kind of albums, but None of these are giants. Um, outside of Thriller, Prince 1999. Again, not Purple Rain. 1999 was was a, a big album, but it wasn't huge. Um, Nebraska by Bruce Springsteen, right? It was kind of like, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Rio by Duran Duran. Another big album, but not Monster. It was kind of their breakthrough, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, Love Over Gold by Dire Straits. So Brothers in Arms was still a few years away. Diver Down by, by uh, Van Halen. Again, a big album, but it wasn't huge. It was had Dancing in the Street, Pretty Woman, right? It wasn't like they're, you know. That was kind of, that was a leftover album too. It was yeah. a, like a compilation yeah. or odds and sods, as I like to call it. Yeah, kind of, kind <laughs> of, yeah, kind of yeah. Like, put them on the map, but it wasn't a, a, a big album for Van Halen fans. Maybe. Right. But, mm -hmm. uh, Mirage by Fleetwood Mac, a two, it, it went number one for, it was on, on number one for about a month or so. But again, two million, two million copies, not nothing big. Uh, Peter Gabriel, I'm not sure what number album it is. It's with the four. weird face. Okay. It was four, or as, as it's called, Security. They actually okay. gave it a proper title. That's security. Yeah. Uh, yep. You know, Kissing to be Clever, the debut album from the Culture Club. They would win a mm -hmm. Grammy that year for Best New Artist. So uh, American Fool, John Mellon, a lot of great albums, but nothing on the, on the big scale. Mm. You know, usually when we do these – do these episodes, there's a couple of big ones. There's a couple of contenders and, you know, yeah. Um, and to this, there, there just wasn't a lot. There was, it was great music. All that stuff was great. Nothing that was this monster, you know, the previous record holder was Fleetwood Mac rumors. Right. And we did that episode and that's and, true. Yep. Uh, and we said, everybody had a copy of rumors, whether you knew anything or liked Fleetwood Mac, it was like a staple in your pantry, right? Everybody has rice and beans in, in their in their cupboard. Everybody had a copy of Fleetwood Mac, and this is and, and Thriller became that plus, right? Thriller became the an album that everybody just had. Like, yep, it was just there. It was so, even even older people. I remember my mom listening to Thriller on cassette. Oh, yeah, <laughs> was that the first? I mean, how how did you come about it? Was that the first time you you've ever heard it? Was I would have to say no. It, it had to be. It had to be probably the girl is mine because I'm like, oh man. Okay. Um, at the time, I'm like, geez, I wasn't really into the Beatles, so Paul McCartney was like, okay, Paul McCartney and yeah. Michael Jackson was like, eh, all right. Um, <laughs> but then of course MTV. I mean, it was all, it was all MTV as far as my my exposure. What about yours? I distinctly Primarily. remember getting the vinyl. I don't, I'm not sure who who actually did I buy it for my. Because I know my, my mom was a big Michael Jackson fan. She mm -hmm. loved watching him perform. Um, you know, Off the Wall was a great album. That's that's an album that we had, my brother had, and my mom really played the hell out of that thing. So <laughs> it was, you know, that was the from 79 or 78. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, she had heard, I think, you know, a couple of the songs on the radio. And of course, she, yeah, again, yeah, the Paul McCartney, you know, The Girl Was Mine, she really liked that one. And then we played it for her. And then my brother knew that Eddie Van Halen plays beat it. She, and he was telling my mom, like, cause my mom was like, Oh, I, I can't stand that Van Halen, you know, like <laughs> you know, the <laughs> hard rock stuff, you know? And my brother's like, yeah, well he plays yes, on this album. Did you know that? And he's, she's like, no, he, no, he doesn't. 
So I, I distinctly rem remember playing the song. <laughs> and then, then, of course, the guitar solo was like, oh, my God, this is cool. Guess you know, what, this is like, <laughs> Yeah, this is like and then, of course, you know, the song thriller with Vincent Price comes in and, it, you know, she was she was over the moon about it. And she would play this thing over and over and over again. So, yeah, it was a, a big album in my house for for a time. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah no and, and, and I think <clears throat> when I had said when I just said in the beginning, I, I list I listed the first single. I said, the girl is mine. You're like, oh, God. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of <laughs> Michael Jackson fans felt the same thing. They're like. This is this is really pandering to a white audience. Like, where is the soul of of off the wall, right? Yeah. Where is that disco funky stuff? We've got you know Paul McCartney, who is like at that point was like forty, you know, so mm -hmm. kind of over the hillish. Uh, although he's still going strong or stronger than ever, uh, but at the time it was like, oh, what what is what is this? It's so sappy and. Um, that whole ending piece doesn't really, I love the song now in, in listening to the album revisiting, yeah. but the ending piece is still problematic just because it's so corny. I know, when know? they're talking. Like, well, yeah, and he's 42 like, and he's 24 and they're talking about fighting over a woman. You know, like I, I told you, Michael, the girl, like, he's like, he's almost like a father scolding him, you know? Well, I love, I, I, well, I love when Michael like hits the point home and then Paul comes in with, I don't believe. Yeah. you know that's like he, he takes the song out you know <laughs> I, that's the, that's the best part of that is when that right. whole thing ends and yeah and he yeah. You, you almost think it's michael jackson the way michael jackson says the last the last word and then the sing singing phrasing starts that's right and it's yeah. so seamless it almost seems like michael jackson said that last thing that, like you keep dreaming and then it almost seems like he, he sings like i don't believe but it's, it's right mccartney well so I, I i definitely think that it's its best attribute is the fact that it's such a crossover record. You know, it has all these elements to it. You do have the R and B there. It is there. You know, there's yeah. enough of it to yeah. please the, you know, it just wasn't it there in the, has... at the outset. The problem was <laughs> yeah. the first single is like, well, what? Well, what I remember uh, WPLJ, you know, we, uh, we, 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 we often talk about NEW as being like the premier rock radio station of our, of our day. New York. But, um, PLJ was also, you know, just nothing but rock. And they were the first like radio station to play, I think, beat it. And, uh, and that was it. I mean, PL, ever since then, PLJ became like a top 40 type station, like mm -hmm. not too long after that. It was like, they playing all the hits and they, they completely changed their format. I don't know if Thriller is, you know, directly responsible, but I think that's the direction it might have, because it might have. I think other people were doing it as well. Like this sort of crossover type stuff. Yeah. That well, how and, do you, and, you know. McCartney yeah. had set, had set the blueprint already because he on tug of war he had done uh, Ebony and Ivory with Stevie Wonder yeah Stevie yep. Wonder mm -hmm. here's the thing say that song say 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 with Michael Jackson and McCartney yeah would come out like later on on McCartney's Pipes of Peace they actually recorded say 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 a year before the girl is mine I'm not surprised. They recorded that first a year before. They just never did anything with it because it was going to go on McCartney's album. And then they got together and did The Girl. So you think, oh, say, say, say. Oh, they're back together again. That was actually, even though it was released after, it was it was recorded a year before. I, I never knew that, but I'm not yeah. surprised. <laughs> you know, that's just McCartney. He, you know, records stuff, stockpiles it, puts it away, takes it out. You know, that's, he, yeah, that's like, his, okay. you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that kind of, you know, so I could see why, why, you know, soul fans or Motown fans or Jackson five fans would be a little up in arms, but mm -hmm. yeah, looking at the, at the radio market at the time. And like I said, with, with McCartney and, and Stevie wonder with Ebony and Ivory, it kind of made sense. Um, probably a good, you know, it was a good thing they released it first. Cause they got that. That's probably the weakest single out of what would come after. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, so it's probably a good thing. They got rid of it. Like they got, it actually went to number two. Um, and it's probably a good thing that they kind of shuffled that one off again. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but if, if the record company or the record buying public was wondering like, what's, if this is an indicator, it mm -hmm. really wasn't, you know, it, yeah. it really wasn't. Cause then the second, you know, the second single would be Billie Jean mm -hmm. and that would just change yeah. music. It changed MTV. Cause uh, you know, we, we talked walk. in the past about, about MTV reluctant to play black artists and, and there wasn't black artists and, um, Sony at one point threatened MTV and said, listen, we're going to, you know, you don't start playing we're going to kind of put it out there that you guys don't, don't do that. You don't play black artists. You know, they kind of threatened them a little bit too. Yeah. I said, yep. you gotta, guys got to, you know, get with it. And, uh, once they did, it was, it was a game changer for, it was a That's game changer right. for music. It was a game changer for MTV. And it was a game changer for Michael Jackson. Yeah. Cause it exposed him to a whole other, sure. you know, if, if yep. MTV was a mainly rock white oriented audience at the time, mainly, um, 
it, it put this out, it put this song in f- full in front of everybody, you know, and yeah. that, and that, yeah, the iconic music video and, uh, just the music video. Plus, you know, they, they would often play, sometimes they would even play like the lot, like there was a show. I don't know what the show was. And was it the Grammys or something where they would play that as well? I remember seeing the like him doing the moonwalk and I think it was after a little bit after, but yeah, he did it. Yeah. yeah and people went nuts. Yeah. People went yeah. nuts. He did a little of Billy Jean, did the moonwalk and that's all he needed. The place fell down. Yeah. You know, he, didn't, well, I, he, didn't, I mean, he didn't even do anything else after that. Billy Jean was was huge in 82, though. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, that's the one video that <laughs> you could count on being played every almost every yes. hour. <laughs> almost, you know, pretty much. Yeah. So once yeah. once MTV got on board, they got on board big because it was, yeah. you know, that again, it was such a different time for music, you know, and, and album sales were kind of slumping. Like I said, that not a lot going on with, with the music business. It, it was OK. You know, mm-hmm. there was great music out there, but there wasn't one person commanding yet. Um, so like I said, it was, pro- you know, Michael Jackson was looking to be more independent, no longer a kid. You know, he was, I think it was 21 when he did Off the Wall. So he was moving away from the, from the, from the Jacksons, although they would put out an album after this victory yeah. um, right after this, but kind of becoming his own artist. And as someone who's been in the business since he was a child, he's, he's well equipped. You know, he, he you know, finally a, a man of his own ideas and what he wants to do. Mm-hmm. And Quincy Jones, he worked, Quincy Jones worked with him on Off the Wall and they would pair again for Thriller. Uh, and like I said in the beginning, I just, the, the sound of this album yeah, is just, you know, Quincy Jones has worked for, with everybody from, you know, Frank Sinatra on up. You know, That's he's right. been in the business for 150 years, literally, uh, producing big band stuff, swing stuff through the 60s. His own a stuff. jazz artist himself. Yeah, jazz, yeah, jazz yep. artist, pop artist. He would <coughs> he would, he would release songs under his own name, but have other singers sing it, you know, kind of sing it like James Ingram, who's on this mm-hmm. album as well. Um, so a man of many hats, and and it's it's got just that smooth, smooth arrangement to it. You know, the yeah. beat the beats are there, but they're not sloppy and it doesn't get out of control. Everything is is so well managed in, in the production. Right. That, like I said, I would love, I would love to hear this whole album just without any vocals, just to hear the instrumentation. And you've got uh, a lot of members from Toto figure, figure prominently into this album as well. Uh, yeah. Either, either through songwriting or, or just playing uh, on the album. You know, you've got uh, Steve Lukather, you've got uh, David Page, you've got Jeff Picaro, Steve Picaro, those four guys, are, that's basically four out of five of Toto. Mm-hmm. Uh, or is there six in total? Four. It's most of them. Um, the core. That's the yeah, core. The core. The right there. Yeah. Steve Lucas are right there. Are, are the ones. Um, and then, like I said, you got Eddie Van Halen. So you've got these, and then you've got you know, um, soul and 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 funk artists as well in in mm-hmm. this too. So uh, using these different uh, genre artists and and kind of bringing them together. You know, Greg Fillingains and and he played with Clapton, right? Eventually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and then of course, Janet Latoya Jackson would be on to James Ingram, you know, so you got soul singers. Uh, It's just a, it sounds like it would be a hot mess, but it's really not. But it's, it, it, it's a success in that, in that, uh, in that way though, the, the, the idea of the crossover, the, you know, the, it's sort of a, it's, it is a real shot in the arm for the whole sort of racial boundaries and and you know it's really you know taking that stuff and and nobody and it's just like you know talent is talent you got people who are you know you pick the right people for this thing you know that's where you go whether you're black white you know whatever so michael jackson i guess he knew this so did quincy jones they had the sense to know that you know we're going to do something a little bit bolder and we're and find the right people to do it these people were available let's do it you yeah, know, so. that, that's the key right there. And and also yeah. moving away from disco, you know, 79 that's off right. the wall yeah. was definitely disco tinged and disco was done. So it's like, okay, what's, what's the next thing that we got to move, you know, by 82 was decidedly over. So disco was, was definitely a thing of the past. So it's like, okay, what, what do we do? So they make, what, they, they, they the essentially make the, you know, by in effect, they make an album that is somewhat undefinable, you know, cause it's just so, so eclectic in that yeah. sense. And that's, what's so brilliant about it. You know, that's yeah, why it's, and, so, it's lingered and it, it's, it's, it has appealed to a, such a mass audience, I think, you know, I think so. so. I think so. Cause you're, you're absolutely right. And it's, it's easy to listen to. Uh, and again, you pretty much know almost every song. And that was, mm-hmm. we talked about it in, in our in excess kick episode. Um, in excess is stated goal 
was to make every song as good enough to be a single. And this was the same thing. Michael Jackson said, I want, yeah. I don't want, why, why are there, why are there songs on albums that are B-sides? Like, what is the point of that? Like, what are you not right. giving, like not giving your best or what is it? So I want to make an album where every song's an A-side and guess what? <laughs> seven <laughs> pretty, out of nine. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. <laughs> seven, seven out of nine ain't too shabby. No. Uh, for, 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 for having such a lofty goal, it's great to have those lofty goals. Mm -hmm. Um, like in excess had it and they, they had pretty good success with it. And the rest of their album was really good as well. Um, this, this is pretty much mission accomplished. I mean, yeah, uh, it, it was just one after the other it, and the album was number one. It dropped off. It was number one again. It was, it was the biggest selling album in, cause it came out so late in 82. Uh, but in 83 and 84, it was, it was still, it was the biggest selling album for two years. Mm -hmm. That's just the, the wake that it left behind it that that you know other there were other number one albums obviously but as far as sales going this thing was just a juggernaut yeah you know it wouldn't stop those you know the single the the last single thriller was released in november of 83 so if almost a, like a full year after the album came out they were still releasing it and thriller would be the pinnacle probably because of the music video mm -hmm. which <laughs> I remember okay. that. I remember, you know, on MTV, they were they were really promoting the shit out of the the world premiere of Thriller, directed by John Landis. You know, America Werewolf in London, and this yeah. big thing. I, I remember I was home for it. I remember watching, like, you know, it, it used to be a big thing when those the, you know world premiere videos would come on. Um, and I was home for. I remember being home for that. I remember being home for that and watching it. And it's like uh, yeah. again taking the <clears throat> taking the music video form and making it into something well, and it wasn't artistic. it wasn't a two three minute video was it it was a 15 minute film short it was a, essentially a short film which was brilliant i mean it was it was the biggest thing i had ever seen on mtv so as far as the, yeah, you know, the, the, you know the, the cinematic aspect of it was just so wow yeah because you, you got a feature <laughs> film director involved like <laughs> that's right like normally these these music videos were directed by music video directors like guys that can like knock this stuff out yeah. quick and get it done. And that's, that's their thing. But you, you know, Oh, we got John Landis who at the time was a bigger name than he is now. I don't even, does he even make films anymore? John Landis? I mean, I, I'm not sure, but yeah, American yeah, Werewolf like, was, really, was, was huge. Yeah. And and Michael this was Jackson had seen the film and he was such a fan that, you know, of course, Michael Jackson, you know, he, as we all know how, you know, quirky he was and he had his, uh, <laughs> you know, he had his um, definitely another side to him. That was just uh, somewhat uh, strange. Yeah, or you know, fantasy, he would exhibit these strange, and he would, but he was really into that kind of stuff, and um, so and that was Rick the Baker, idea. That Baker, was the concept. Who did, who did the uh, Rick Baker did the the effects for American Werewolf in London, and they yeah. got him to do the, and you could tell it's straight out. They, oh, yeah. well, his transformation is straight out of American Werewolf in London, and, and it was funny because he didn't want to do another. Like when he said that, oh, I want to change into a werewolf. He was like, no, I'm sick of werewolves. <laughs> <laughs> well, so he changed him into a were cat which was interesting sort of okay. like a black panther type so when Splitting he changes hairs. it the idea God. was was to was that was the kind of I, I guess it was a callback to uh I was a teenage werewolf with Michael Landon the old f film from the 50s so to kind of have that look but kind of look more like a cat where it was like yeah, black he looked cool. and I, I liked his yeah, yeah I liked it he had the the gray the gray mane yeah uh, it yeah. was pretty neat and yeah. and the interesting thing about this music video too is the song is totally remixed. It is. It is not in any order that that resembles like when you listen to the song on the album. That's right. The, the song as it appears in the music video is not. It's chopped up. It's spliced. the The Vincent Price thing is in the middle of the of in the middle of the film. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's choruses in the beginning, but then no choruses at the end, and you don't hear the refrain, the chorus of Thriller until the very end of the of, of the of the video. Yeah. Um. So not only are they are they taking the the film making aspects of music video to another level. They're taking what they're doing with the music too and saying, well, we need to make this music fit what we want to do. So it, it's not like, oh, we're just going to staple this music, the music in here or whatever. It's like, no, we're going to move this around. We'll move the, we'll move the verses, all the verses in the front. So it's kind of like a song, like a story that we're telling yeah. in the beginning. So then we can have a musical breakdown with all the great dancing and then, and then revisit the chorus at the very end. So it really was, you know, when you, re when you sit there and think about it, there was a lot of thought that went into it. That's right. Um, Not only that, but also scoring the thing, bringing Elmer Bernstein in because he had worked with Landis on his films, and and actually, there's a score to the to the music video, the sort of scary music that plays in the background, and then it, then it cuts to the song. So it's brilliant. It's just just really really 
the level of detail is just, Vincent yeah. Price either. You know what's that? Take a roll with Vincent Price either. Yeah, no, I understand. I, what I, I think I read, he got this on two in two takes. <laughs> I'm so not that's surprised. a pro. That's a pro, of course. And he was up there at that point too. Yeah, he was. Well, eighty two. Yeah, he was still. He was. You know, he was getting up there. So yeah, I think it was might have been around seventy or. Yeah. Late, late, really late 60s. But right? this is when Vincent Price was Vincent Price. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the, this is the persona that, you know, <laughs> you know, they rot tend- inside a corpse's shell. <laughs> like very much like like Nicholson or or any of these, you know, these actors that we speak of. And yeah, and he uh, was trying he used to try and get away. He never he wanted to get away from that, much like Leonard Nimoy, like kind of wanted to like, oh, I'm too and then you embrace it. It's like, you know. Yeah. It's, well, bringing him in and then of course, you know, uh Tim Burton bringing him in for Edward Scissorhands. So, you know, kind of putting him in those little roles where he's not really taking himself seriously, but he knows that that's some of the stuff that he did. So, but he, but he does it to great effect to have these little cameos is, is just and so. That, that shows, shows that people appreciate him. Like Tim Burton yeah, who, loves it. You know? Why wouldn't you get, why would you get anybody else? Right. I mean, you know, <laughs> he's a master. Exactly. If he's yeah. available and he's, yeah, he's able, why, why not do it? That's right. Um, Yeah. Th- this, this album, just was hitting hitting on so many different levels and that was the thing is like you said something for if you like the funk there's plenty of it you know mm-hmm. um if if you wanted to get that rock person in there you, you like you said you you kind of highlight oh eddie van halen is on this album for beat it um which was another another groundbreaking video too with the choreography and the west side story yeah. inspired <clears throat> kind of storyline and um, yeah. I was I was watching the video I was watching the videos today, <laughs> and I noticed the weird. It's it's weird, and I, it it doesn't. I don't think it means anything. But in in beat it, um, like all the gang members are kind of coming together in the beginning, and a guy crawls out of a manhole cover. <laughs> like one of the gang members comes out of a manhole cover. <laughs> yeah, in, in thriller. All the zombies are kind of coming out of the graves, and one zombie comes out of a manhole cover as well. <laughs> Is that supposed to be the guy from Beat It that got like kind of walking Maybe. dead? Like, you know I'm, what? You, I, I watched them back to back, and I'm like, wait, it's like there's another guy coming out of a manhole cover. It's probably that's probably true. It's probably a callback to that. I don't you know, know. It so because it's I so mean, weird. Like, like when do gang members come out of manhole? Like, what is he doing down why there? Why is he in the sewer? Yeah, why is he in there? Yeah. And, and how did get the manhole cover off anyway? Yeah. <laughs> It's so strange. It's, it's the eighties, you, know, you didn't question. It's like, oh, you're no, you, you don't they're question probably in manhole cover. They're probably in alleys. It's like, no, you don't really. question the look, the the sense of that that sort of neo noir type. You know, the, the 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 neon signs and the and the you know rain soaked streets and the you could see the neon in the puddles and the, the wind is blowing and there's like debris flying everywhere and and then and then there's all and then next thing you see is these fancy pants. Yes, <laughs> and their, their their hearts off, you know, you know, tie, tie, just, tying the wrists together and, and yeah, whipping out the switchblades, and then he kind of comes in, you know, and and that was the thing as as well is it it really brought like because of the music video format, yeah, and and the popularity of the album, yeah, it, people started to also realize that he's a really good dancer, you know, and he didn't chore- he helped choreograph every, you know, all the stuff, mm-hmm. didn't do it himself, but was he able to execute that stuff in, in a way that was particular to him? You know, that like yeah. the, the dance in thriller has been, you know, flash mobbed and, and, you know, uh, honored and, and copied throughout oh the God. years. You see, you'll see that, that, you know, that particular dance at the end kind of copied and, and, you know, kind of it's revered uh, in, in dance and, and just his moves are copied. Now it's, it's just become, you know, they're so particular to him. And I think, you know, if you look at the videos for from off the wall, he's kind of it's there's a little bit of it there. Um, but when Thriller came out, it was kind of like, OK, here's this artist who's going to deliver this this home run album. But can all can not only can he sing and because he, he's been doing it for so long. And that's a, a part of this, I think, as well. Because like I said, since he was he's performing since he's a child, he's got he knows his voice like he knows the instrument. Yeah, you know, this isn't a debut album. But in a way, it is for an artist that's kind of coming into his own and, and trying to realize his own independence. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's got he's got his own killer instrument, and then visually, he's able to provide the goods as well. So it's not like oh, he's great, but the videos. It's like no, it, it this is everything. People were loving the videos. It, they love watching him dance. They loved watching that part of it. He was a um, and being entertained, masterclass of entertainer, you know. And I'm 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 almost positive that I'm sure there's a lot of dance classes troops 
you know, jazz dance, you know, groups, things like that, that have taken some of those moves and, and have made it a thing, made, you know, made it a part like an actual, you know, the, I don't know if they call it the Michael Jackson thing or whatever, but I'm, I, I can almost guarantee that there are people are teaching those things in dance classes, like as, as a, as a form of dance, like he created these, There's these no moves way you could that not, not nobody had ever done before. Yeah. It was just, you know, phenomenal. Agreed. So yeah, there's, there's no way that you could not have that inspiration and have that, uh, mm -hmm. that be part of the, part of, part of the whole package or part of the influence. And that's the thing. It's like, that's what was the appeal. It's like, I don't care who you are. Uh, you know, you, the guy was entertaining, you know, you, you just, you know, we, I've, I've heard people who are so deeply into metal, even our, our friend, Andy, uh, who we have on quite often, who was a huge fan of this album and huge fan of Michael Jackson. Just, you know, he could tell you that, uh, the, the music video, the, the album was, was, was one of the most influential out one of the albums that's sort of the coming of age albums that we like to talk about, you know, as we do this podcast, um, but that was one of the formidable albums of his youth, you know, and it, 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 it's, it's gotta be for all of us as well, whether we like to admit it or not, we might not have been big fans. Maybe then maybe we didn't want to admit <laughs> that we were huge Michael Jackson fans back in the day. Cause we were kind of in our own thing, but I mean, come on, you can't, you can't help but, you know, look at this stuff and say, this is this stuff is just groundbreaking. It's it's timeless. It's you know even today I could still watch it and be yeah totally entertained by it and just feel that stuff again and yeah and and admittedly know. like you know I'll I'll full, full disclosure yeah I was a little miffed at the time because I was just getting into big into Fleetwood Mac yeah and they were my favorite group and then oh they have the biggest selling album of all time yeah uh, uh, that's one of my favorite bands they're number one uh, yeah and then Michael Jackson comes out just destroys. Just, just lays waste to to the charts, lays waste to to all yeah. those artists, and uh, yeah, and, it was know, a little bit of a bitter pill to swallow, but you can't dispute it. I mean, a few years later, Prince would do the same thing, and Prince was another force to be reckoned with. I'm sure we'll probably talk about him at some point, but it's just, I you know, I wish I could have appreciated him then, because the guy was just an absolute genius. I mean, you know, a musician. Uh, oh man, it's just. And again, it's that maybe it's that off-putting stuff that we, you know, we watch these music videos. Perhaps there were <laughs> maybe a little too, I don't know, weird or flamboyant or whatever you want to call, you know, whatever you want to say. It's just like maybe it's just we just weren't we didn't appreciate the art of it at the time or something. I don't know. I don't, I, you know, I can't really say. But Michael Jackson, on the other hand, was easier to swallow, an easier pill to swallow, certainly. But uh, it was just. Man, just you know, I you know, I think of Beat It, and I think of Billy Jean, and I can still see that those images in my head right now. I can, mm -hmm. I don't even need to watch the video, okay? I could because I could see it in my head. I could see yeah. those 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 floor panels lighting up as he's walking across, and the cat, you know, running across the thing, and yeah, yeah, it's it, just, it was just yeah. it was so ingrained, so ingrained. in society. Mm -hmm. yep. it, it was like I said in the beginning; it was everywhere. It was a staple product that. That yeah, that parents could listen to, that that younger kids could listen to, that you know, uh, like I said, outdoor, you know, kids, people that were kids with Michael Jackson, maybe during the Motown era, mm -hmm. could pick up on this, uh, and and radio certainly loved the shit out of it, and and just you know, like I said, seven singles out of nine, you're not going to go wrong with it, and you you couldn't, right? Uh, I don't think you could deny it. You couldn't get you couldn't get away from it, even if you wanted to. Um, so there's something for that too. It's kind of like. You know, maybe maybe if it was a lesser album, you might not might not have been exposed to it as much and been like, eh. But I'm sure it turns some fans around of, of maybe hearing this stuff so much that like, you know what, let me, yeah, I I I know most of it, or let me check it out, or yeah, it's not really that bad. Or like like I said, like when Thriller came out, all of a sudden everybody was wanted to was was at home to watch the premiere, no matter who you were. It was like a big, it was like a big event. Right. And it was, you know, this you know, short film type thing, and nobody knew what it was gonna be. Um, so he was just creating this, this buzz, um, around him and, and people just wanted, were, were just wanting more. And the album, the, the thing is the album was able to deliver it. That's, that's the key. I'm not going to, you know, I'd be lying if I said at one, at some point the album became such a monster that I was just, you know, you kind of get tired of it. You yeah, kind of get absolutely. tired. And then that's when you turn around and say, you know what? The old stuff was better. 
I liked him in the Jackson Five. <laughs> that was the time, you know. That, like it was, his, you know, it's cool to say that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody it's, loves Thriller. It's yeah. right. Everybody loves Thriller. But check this stuff out. Check out Off the yeah. Wall. Check out you know the Jackson Five. Like I, that was me. I mean, I yeah, I, I do I do that a lot. You know, because it, it was great stuff. The truth is, it was great then too. Like he was fantastic as a kid. Watching that stuff too was a lot of fun. But you know, just maturing into what he ultimately became was just this artist um was was fun was fun to see but of course you know like i said you know you just when it when you when you see the videos for the hundredth time and you're like all right all right let's let's you know I, i'd like to hear something else like you know like somebody who's in that isn't familiar with michael jackson would say well check this stuff out the old motown stuff is tr- pretty good too you know and you know you just want to be that kind of the mud, that, that, you know, contrary. throwing the wrench in the works and trying to be difficult. Yeah, you, well, you want to be hip for hip sake. Oh yeah, no, I like yeah. you know check out his Motown stuff, but you, right. you you can't go wrong with this. And and this album, not there's no throwaways. I mean, every song pretty much is is like four minutes, five minutes average. Yeah. So these are like lo- these aren't like a little short pop ditties. You know, these are fully realized. The the beats are there. I mean, just from the first song, want to be starting something. Uh, it just this this album just takes off. You know, yeah. it just absolutely takes off. Well, the and, album uh, too. I mean, that the album is one thing, but even the video, the music video, and then they they came out with the making of the Thriller on VHS. That was a beast. I don't know how many times, like, we rented it. Of course, you know, from the mom and pop video shop, uh, you know, up the street. And every time we would we'd want to see it again, um, it would always be sold out. They would always, it would always, it was always it was gone. It was like, we could never, multimedia thing. we could, yeah. So we ended up buying it. There you go. <laughs> you know, it came out and we just, we just bought, yeah. bought the bullet right. and we just, we bought the damn thing and, you know, we watched it over and over. Now yeah. you don't have to worry. But because um, the cool thing was, it was that that whole making of stuff was great too. And again, a master, it's almost like watching, a, you know, like you're watching a movie, you know, it's like finding out how they did it in the, in American Werewolf, the same thing, like the, the prosthetics and the whole thing. And then John Landis and Rick Baker and all these guys are interviewing. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. So, yep. all right, let's get to some of the other stuff. Cause Thriller isn't the only oh, yeah. song. <laughs> and neither is the girl is mine. All those, you know, um, but like well, I said, the yeah. Halloween portion of it that let's, that's let's the put Halloween that, portion. Let's, put, there let's put that to bed right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's just, it. You know. we, 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 we did our, our Halloween obligation to it, but that's right. Um, like I said, want to be starting something like this album just kind of kicks off. Like like with a danceable, yeah. funky. Um, the only weird thing about the this song is is some of the lyrics. There's you know he's got the whole want to be starting something, and then there's like the song like kind of breaks down. The main lyric is "You're a vegetable." I don't know if you know that. He's like, "You're a vegetable. You're a vegetable." I'm like, "Why is he saying you're a vegetable?" <laughs> It's weird, yeah. but it's great. I mean, the song is great, but when I was yeah. watching it with the lyrics on, I'm like, you're a vegetable. And they're like, you're a buffet. I'm like, you're a ve- but why a vegetable? It's like, we, you know, yeah. like, all right, uh, we, we go with it. You <laughs> know what? But, and you know what? You don't, you, you don't care you don't because care. the, the song has such an infectious groove to it. That's right. Um, that it's, and I think it's that's not the about intent. that. That it's was, about- I was on, that's by design. I think exactly. there's no doubt. Yeah. There's just those nonsensical lyrics. There's, Hey, I, I can't come up with anything. Let's just throw something in there. The you song is going to carry it. The music's going to carry it. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. <laughs> yeah. And then at the end, it's got the, you know, I'm a say, I'm a say, you know, it's got yeah. great. It's, it's just got so that, that song just has so many different like sections to it. When it comes um, in, like when they, when, they, when it's just the vocals and then it kicks, all, everything just kicks back in. I love that. That's my yeah, favorite part of the song. It's, yeah. It's so well, so yep. well arranged this album. So, yep. so side one, we're not going to go through each song, but just so you you know what you're getting into, if you've never listened to Thriller, side one is want to be starting something, baby be mine, which is not one of the singles, but it is a popular song. Mm-hmm. Uh, the girl is mine in Thriller. So you got four songs, three out of four. You already know. Uh, I think side two is the stronger side. Mm-hmm. Um, you got beat it, Billie Jean, and and two songs that have really come to like recently, Human Nature and Pyt. Human um, nature is my favorite. I used to think new human nature is oh, a little sappy. It's like, eh, well, I love it. You know, I always, but upon it. listening to it again and really giving it, giving, it's beautiful. giving it some ear attention. Um, I, I really appreciate his, his vocal on it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and the great thing of the thing about thriller and, and anything that would come after is, is after this in bad, he would start to get those vocal affectations like the, da and the, ah, like after every like <laughs> yeah. lot, like, like it became a thing. It, it's on this album, but not, 
to the extreme that it would become almost but, a part of the way he sang that's going right forward yeah. so that that's one of the things i like this too is you're still getting michael jackson kind of you know in in singer mode and not in that performance attitude mode i, I don't know how to describe it with, but with that that weird vocal affectation with with that kind of thing at the end of it um so you still you still had like a, a an album of of that not really a big thing and and more singing and that's why like human nature is he's just re he's really singing mm -hmm. um i really dig it and then pyt seems so kind of corny but i actually like it i like the i like the instrumentation i like the arrangement on it um yeah you know the p you know the the, the vocoder on it of course you know you, you can't go wrong with that but it was that's very 80s of course mm -hmm. um but but the album just has such a light like the, the beats are there. The beats are heavy, but then the arrangement has such a light and, and really Quincy Jones, a, a lush, there's a lushness to it mm -hmm. that if you, if you concentrate and you kind of remove the vocals while you're listening to it and kind of listen to the backing, it's just a, it's just a beautiful sounding album, which is really what I like too. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, I don't listen to it a lot lately, but you know, listening to it in coming into this was, was, was a thrill as it always is. I mean, I always love revisiting this stuff. It was a what, um, you know, so thrill. <laughs> it was a thrill. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, you know, it is, it is, it's a, it's a, it's a masterclass of, of, of studio production and, and you got to give that to Jones. You got to give it, you know, he's, uh, he was a formidable, he's a formidable talent <clears throat> in terms of, of producer you know, extraordinaire. So yeah, and I think a great guide for Michael Jackson in the beginning to kind of yeah. get him to, to, you know, kind of get, get familiar with that type of stuff with studios, production, arranging well, off know, the wall was, was a formidable album too. Yeah. Don't forget. I mean, that was a, that was a, that was a pretty, you know, obviously not as half as popular as thriller, but, but a lot of great stuff on that one as well. And it's starting to go there starting, it was much more R and B much more, you know, <clears throat> but definitely, uh, you know, what was to come, you know, the, it's, it's always that one album, the, like the right before the big one, right. So it's a new world record and out of the blue, like, you know, uh, taking it to that level, but you know, it always starts somewhere. It always has that, <clears throat> that, that foundations are laid. Yeah. The original And then, and then the next thing somewhere. is like, you, you, you gotta, you gotta beat that. So yeah, this is definitely. Yeah. And, and, and people, you know, bad would be the follow up. I don't know, three, four or five years later. Um, a lot of reviewers actually said bad, bad is better in, in the, in the long, in the, in the long run, they're like in, in the long run, when all is said and done, bad is a, a bolder statement. It's a better album. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, it's really great. It's really, it's very slick, um, which is different than, than this album is not very slick. It's well-produced, which is different, but you know, and, and he worked with Quincy Jones on that as well, but it's got a different feel to it. Bad is more. Um, this, I think it's more, more intimate. I think this has a little bit more of an intimate feel to it. Sure. Bad. Bad is a little bit more. I think bad your, was was a, was a step very very strongly in the Prince direction, where it was. There's a lot of rock. There's there's a lot of like, you know, guitar riffs and that kind of thing. It was more steep. It was you know you'd think of like, you know, just some of the, like a lot of those guitar riffs that that is a much more grittier album. Not gritty, but gritty, but polished but but yeah like you say bolder harder edged and i think it was I, I think i don't know i don't know if he was trying to compete with prince at the time or whatever i don't i don't know but i think that's what that's what i get out of it is is this is a step in that direction of more a much more sort of rock sort of fusion thing going on or even kind of like a you know like a callback to the old funkadelic stuff where it was like, there was a lot of rock guitar in that stuff. There was some heavy electric guitar and some like Hendrix and like sort of, you know, type stuff being done, you know? And I think that was kind of a step in that direction where he was trying to go there a little bit. Uh, but who knows? I don't know. I, 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 I don't think it's a better album necessarily. At that point I was kind of like, yeah, you know, Michael Jackson is like, yeah, he's big, he's huge. He's, you know, so I kind of yeah, didn't really pay attention. The exposure had, started yeah. to settle in and, and he was a you know and that and this type of success changes you you yeah. know and that and that's what bad was about too a lot of you know the song leave me alone and you know then he had started to to you know people started to kind of really invade his private life and oh quirky he wants to buy the elephant man's bones and he sleeps in an oxygen <laughs> chain you know like like yeah. all this you know weird stuff and then some of it more tawdry than others um things change right and and like i said like you said this album is kind of like the innocence 
Mm -hmm. right? Because they didn't know how big it was, much like, you know, and here's the comparison, right? You know, with Fleetwood Mac rumors, that was their biggest album. Their follow up was decidedly different, right? They, that the intent was let's subvert the expectations. With with Thriller, the intent was to do it bigger and better, mm -hmm. right? So that and that's usually and that's exactly what a record company wants. Uh, and that was no slouch. That did like ten million copies. So Bad was certainly, uh, you know, if you compare Fleetwood, you know, rumors to Tusk, and you compare <laughs> Thriller to Bad, Michael Jackson comes out on top as yeah. far as like sales and success comes and and again you know uh as a successor to thriller a lot of the critics think it's strong if not a better a better thing that led to a you know uh dangerous and a, a, a three album cycle that was like you know they they that they think is his best work so well i spoke um, of like being undefinable i mean bad to me is even more undefinable what is it songs like man in the mirror <laughs> is that what exactly is that is that is it pop? Is it R and B? I don't Gospel know. Gospelly. It's it's a it's, lot. Yeah, of it's got like, a little you know, bit of like all those elements. Like there's so much going on there. There's such a hybrid. Man, that, who's absorbing so much different stuff and creating something new? You know. So yeah, 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 and doing it on his own terms. I mean, that was the thing. As much as he was ridiculed and mm -hmm. made fun of, impersonated, whatever it is, he he just continued just to do whatever he wanted his own way. He didn't yeah. care. You know, as, as much as his looks changed and people said stuff, he just. He just continued to to evolve and to change into what he felt, you know, he needed to be, you know, and the right. and the music kind of came along with him. Um, so you can't you can't you can judge the guy for a lot of different things probably, but um, <laughs> yeah. you can't you can't judge him on 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 his musicality and his attention to detail. And he's not known as you know like especially on this album, he didn't really write a lot. You know, he he didn't come into that songwriting. Mm -hmm. uh thing and until bad you know until it you know that's when he really developed this album it was written a lot of it was written by other people i um, think he he <clears throat> but you he would was, never know you would never know it well, he was such a i I'm, I'm sure that he you know working with quincy jones was must have been sort of again a master class and, and learning from a master and just because eventually michael jackson would become a great arranger himself not only with music but also with putting on the show the dancing the you know he was a choreographer he was you know um yeah, his so tours yeah, were, i mean his, his tours talent just grew yeah. you know exponentially as as it went along so yeah along with became, his power he was able to yeah he was able to do more with it <laughs> yeah right yeah. so much i yeah. mean he, he proclaimed himself the king of pop that kind of was like eh, okay you don't proclaim yourself you let you let people proclaim right. You, right elvis didn't say i'm the king of rock and roll people said you are the king of rock and roll yeah right he there's he no self claimed himself king of pop so I'm like, eh, there's there's a ton you know there's a thing where <laughs> you know with that kind of like you say power and that's exactly what it is because you do have the money you got the clout you have every fan you know all these yeah, people everybody in your wants pocket. to work with you yeah the sky's the limit you know there's so yeah you could afford to make all of these decisions and changes and do whatever the hell you want. And and he did, I mean, to a certain extent. And, and then it just sort of like, I remember the, the lull that all of a sudden he just disappeared. Right. Wasn't there a time? It was like the early, like early nineties or whatever. He just kind of like, yeah, he did. Well, he did dangerous, he I think uh, in, in early 90. And then, yeah. Yeah. Then he put out like a compilation and then nothing really came out until he's like working 2000. with Janet and, yeah, you know, and, then, Toya and then he, and, yeah, yeah. then he started, just, you know, uh, <laughs> kind of really, really reclusive, and and you know that's when he started having legal problems. We, we won't go into that here, right? No, um, but, but that's no. But that's what happened. Yeah, and then and then in two, <laughs> I can't believe it's two thousand nine when he passed away. It's been that's thirteen years ago. Yeah, it doesn't seem like that long. Like that's no. insane. Like. I know <laughs> it's so, so strange when it happened, but it, but it does not seem like it was 13 years ago, like 2009. Mm. It seems like it was later than that. I, I remember watching why. his funeral and, um, John Mayer did such a, that's why I love human nature so much is that that song is like when I came back, I always liked it, but I like it even more. Now he did such a wonderful rendition of human nature, just instrumental. He just went on the guitar. It was so beautiful. And I, I, I love, I love that version. If you ever get to get a chance to check it out on YouTube or it's beautiful. It's so well done and it's right. It's, it's you know, you would see, you can definitely t see somebody like John Mayer doing it. That's the kind of song it is. It, it has that flavor. It has that, you know, there are no boundaries. 
there's no, you know, it's not one particular thing. It's like, it's universal. And, and uh, that's great. That's what, that's what he brings to the table for me is the universality of, of his, of his stuff. It just, um, you know, the racial boundaries are gone and, and that's, you know, it's unfortunate that there's still some of that happening, but it's like, I, I feel like it's, it's sad that artists like him are sometimes are even chastised for it. I don't, I don't know, but it's just like, but he, he brought something to the table that was just, yeah, you know. for, for a, a stretch in 82, um, th- this album tied society together. This was like the, the You're right. thing. You know, like I said, everybody well said. had yep. <laughs> to quote to quote yeah. his quote his own lyrics. It don't matter if you're black or white. Like everybody had this thing. This was like an album that just transcended. That's right. Music. It transcended the industry. Uh, it it transcended entertainment because it was just so. It was bigger than the biggest album. You know, I mean, Fleetwood Mac rumors was like I think maybe sixteen million copies or something like that. This is thirty four million. It, it's big. Like it's like you can't uh, fathom. If, yeah. Unless you were there, how big this was and how big he became overnight. He just, you know, so you, you, you can't be ready for that. You know, mm-hmm. you, you, maybe you think you are. And like I said, he's been in the business since he was a kid. Not on this level, though. Um, and especially by yourself. You know, when you're with the Jackson 5, you're with your brothers. There might be some insulation there. But now this is just you. You know, you've just become the, the singular most popular and famous person on, on the face of the earth mm-hmm. worldwide. There's no... This wasn't like, oh, this is a local thing. Oh, big in Japan. It's like every, even in Japan, he's probably even bigger. Everywhere. I mean, people just go, go ape for him and nuts. Mm-hmm. It's just crazy. Um, and it's just one of those things. And and he, you know, he handled it as best as he could. But but this album was just on everybody's, it was just part of, it was just part of the selective consciousness of, of, of the world. I can't even say of the country, but of the world. Of the world, um, yeah. If you, had to, if you had to pick two. As we close out, what would you pick? What what two songs would you pick? Because if I do three, it's too easy because there's so many. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta only pick two. <clears throat> well, I, I think I as corny as it is, I love thriller. I do. I would pick that and human nature. Those are my two nice go to songs on the album. The, the record know? company, the label was like it's, we we we're not gonna release thriller. It's corny, it's kind of good, it's goofy. Yeah. Um it is, but it but it's so well done that you don't care. Like that's the thing. It's not like Monster Mash where it's like this, you know, <laughs> low budget thing. It's yeah. it's done really well. It takes itself seriously, even though it's a fun song. Right. So you say you're saying thriller and human nature. Yep. Um Yeah, I'm gonna go with human nature. I really like PYT, but um yeah, I'm gonna stick with PYT. Yeah, okay. I really like that. It's just got such a great groove. It's just so, it's so infectious and such a fun. Uh, to me, it's a song. callback. It's almost a callback to Off the Wall. I, there's yeah, a lot yeah, of it's stuff very that's bouncy it, and fun. Yep. It's almost like it's it's a little back. It's a, you know it's going it's looking back that song for me, even though it has the modern like like you say the vocoder and all that kind of stuff happening on there, but it has those like it, it kind of has that disco vibe. Absolutely. You know, it's absolutely. That, yeah, so very, it's very it's funky fun. and just, uh, yeah. And that's what you get. You, yeah, you, you, there's a lot to choose from on this album. So it's, do it's you remember, great. um, Billy Jean, do you remember the mashup they did with, um, um, do it again by Steely yes. Dan? That was fantastic. I heard that on the radio once. I was like, this is this is this is one of the best mashups I ever heard. I think like we should the, be able to find that on YouTube. If we can, I'll drop yeah, a link the to remi- it. The I'll, I'll, the find mix, it I'll, yeah. I'll drop a link to it in the show notes. That would be great. Yeah. Yep. It, someone's yeah. got to have it on YouTube. Oh yeah. It, it, should, it should be a cool one. Yep. Yeah. So those mashups are fun when you get when you when you find mm-hmm. tunes or something, you gotta have the right ear for it. So like yeah. what's this is the key the same or is the tempo and can we can we do it? And some of those mashups are really uh yeah, I, I forgot where I heard it. It was a major station. They was like, "What is this?" All of a sudden, I'm hearing, you know, Steely Dan, and then and then Michael Jackson. I'm like, "Whoa, this is fa- this is great. <laughs> this was really well done." And this was back in the day. You know, they really they were able to combine that, you know, and sync it up, and just man, it's just you know, and it wasn't like one of those fancy remixes where it's just kind of all over the place. It was straight up. It went from one one part one song to another song, but it just kept, the beat is what kept going. You know, so that that was that's fantastic. I'll, I will find it. I will find yeah. it on YouTube. We will link it in the show notes. Absolutely, <laughs> cool. So that that that's going to do it for this episode. Now, if you haven't heard this album, 
Uh, I guess the first question is, where where have you been? Where have you been? (laughs) You know, I mean, I can understand if you're really, really young, but you know, if if you haven't heard this album, you've got to check it out because this is like musical education. This is even before music 101. Yeah. This is like music one. This is the number one album. Everybody should, it's like required listening. You should listen to this album just to get an understanding of, of how great music can be. And, and, what music can do again that, you know, if you weren't there, it's hard to, it, it's really hard to illustrate the impact it had mm-hmm. on society. Um, it was a monster record that, like I said, that transcended, uh, everybody had this thing and it was just a part of the part of society. It really was. Yeah. And, and, and there's very, you know, there are big groups and there are big songs and big albums, but this one was just, every, it was just so ingrained. Um, and I'm glad we got we got to this we got to we got to do this. I, we were going to do it eventually, but uh, it ties in with Halloween because the thriller. So that's a, a nice add on for October. Um, <laughs> but if you haven't listened to this album, go go listen to it. Like stop, you know. Well, wait another two minutes because we'll be done. Or once we're done, put it on, put it on then, for the five hundredth time or yeah, thousandth yeah, time. If, <laughs> even, yeah, even if, you know what? <laughs> even if you haven't listened to it in a while, uh, it sounds gorgeous. It sounds yeah. gorgeous on Spotify and, and streaming services. So give it a listen and really give your ears a treat. Uh, because I'm that's looking what forward it is. to that it's 40th kinda... anniversary edition, man. I'm look. I'm going to be on the out, lookout yeah, for it's that. Yeah, it's got thing. some demo. It's got. I saw so. the track listing. It's got some demos on it. So there, there's some demos. There's some unreleased, and then there's remixes, and then there's the album. So it's got a little bit of everything. But um, if they rec- they recorded 30 tracks for this album, by the way, they re- they worked on 30 tracks and, and whittled it down to nine. So there was a lot mm. of material that mm. was there. And imagine what uh, you know, um, track 30 that didn't make it. I, I, you know, it had to be a hard to see. I'm sure, I'm sure that if, if the, you know, expectation was everything was going to be a single, uh, I'm sure there's no stinker. So I, I wish yeah. they would like just restore all that, but I don't, I don't know if that material is available, but anyway, find it out. It, it, the, the 40th anniversary edi- edition comes out on, uh, in November. So if you're listening to this episode fresh, it'll be about a month away. Um, uh, but by all means, check out uh, thriller by Michael Jackson. It is the top of the heap and no one is going to unseat this album. There is not anything that's going to come close to it. So, uh, it, it's here to stay and and that's quite all right. And it's, it's, it's earned it with yep. eight Grammy awards as well. No one's ever done that either. So that's going to do it for this episode. Again, check us out on social media. We're at 3324 podcast on Instagram and Facebook and we're on YouTube as well. You can see the, the video versions of these episodes and check those out as well. We'll be more than happy and honored to be on in the background while you're working from home and working remotely. We'll be quiet. Just put the volume down and we'll just whisper. Um, So that's going to do it for Eric. This has been Dean and we will catch you on the flip side.